listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again today. We have another true honor talking to our special guest. We have the amazing person, Christina Dent, she's on the show with us. She is the founder and president of In It For Good. You can go to the website, initforgood.com. Today, we're going to be talking about her amazing book, Curious, A Foster Mom's Discovery of an Unexpected Solution to Drugs and Addiction. First and foremost, it is that time of the year where everyone's getting all happy with Christmas. I want to say to you, Christina, Merry Christmas and Soon to be Happy New Year when this uh, show airs. How are you doing today? Thanks, Shemaya. I appreciate that. Same to you. I'm doing well. Just really honored to be with you and with your um, audience. It's just such an important topic and can be a tough time of the year for people who have struggled, who have lost loved ones um, to overdose, who have family members struggling with addiction. And so it's a great time for us to to inject some hope into this conversation too. And before we dive into your book... You have a pretty awesome resume. Not only are you out there, you're a uh, TED Talk speaker. You have the underneath your belt. Like I said earlier, you're the uh, founder and president of In It For Good. I'll stop there and let you do the honors. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself before we talk about your book. Yeah, I'm a born and raised Mississippian. I've lived here my entire life. I went to a Christian liberal arts college, got a degree in Bible, um, was homeschooled kindergarten through high school, and I've just been living in the Jackson area ever since. I married my college sweetheart, and we have three sons, um, and I've just been on a life journey of the Lord taking me in, in different places. I worked in the private sector for a technology startup for a number of years, and I stayed home with my kids, and I homeschooled my older boys for a couple of years, and now I have been um, uh, on this journey of a rethinking, a refocusing in my own life and where the Lord has taken me and the experiences that he gave me. Um, and that has led to a, a totally different career change and a, a different line of work and one that um, I'm honored to do because I think it it has the potential to bring a lot of hope and healing to the world, which as a believer is something that's really important to me to be part of of God's re- you know redemptive and restorative work um, here on earth. And I think there's uh, opportunity for that here. So um, yeah, that's a little about me. I love I love being with my boys. I love um, spending time with my family. I love to read. I'm an avid learner and. Uh, that that quality in particular helped me out on this issue and my own curiosity that has turned into the book called Curious. And Curious, the book, it is based on life story, real life situation. Mm-hmm. Kind of give us a little background of what prompts you to want to write this book for readers to appreciate. Yeah. So in 2014, my husband and I became foster parents. And prior to that, I did not have any connection to drug use or addiction. I had never used drugs at all, high school, college, adulthood. Um, I didn't even like the taste of alcohol. I don't drink because of that. And so I didn't really have any connection to it. I didn't have any close people in my life that were struggling with addictions. And so I really just kind of took what society told me which is people who use drugs are bad people. People who struggle with addiction are sort of a, a next level of um, of bad person. And that was kind of where it landed for me. Um, I, in many ways in my life, I had a lot of empathy for people. I went through challenging things. I talk about some of those um, in the book, was in a terrible train accident as a 15 year old um, where a number of people were killed. Um, and so I, I was able to have empathy for, for some people and yet I didn't even realize it, but I could turn that empathy off at the drop of a hat for other people. And people who were struggling with addictions were definitely in that category for me. So we became foster parents and, um, our second foster son who was placed with us was a baby who came to us straight from the hospital. He had been born premature to his mom and she had been using drugs while she was pregnant. And so in Mississippi, that's basically an automatic cause for removal. And he was put into foster care and brought to 
our home one cold December afternoon. And I, not knowing anything about addiction at that point, had this uh, very clear picture in my mind of what his mom must be like, because I couldn't fathom being a mother myself, how I could do something like using drugs while I was pregnant. And so to me, that meant that her actions were a result of her not loving her son and not being there for him when he needed her and not keeping him safe. And so uh, her son Beckham came to our house and a couple of days later, I brought him to his first visit with her at the local child welfare office. And I pulled up in the parking lot and I popped his car seat out of the car and I turned around to walk into this building. And here comes this woman running across the parking lot towards me. And she is weeping and she runs over to me and I can hear her talking as she's running and she's talking to her son, um, even though she's not even over to him yet. She just can't stop herself. And she runs over and she just starts giving him kisses and talking to him and cooing to him like any mother who loves her child would do. As I'm just awkwardly standing there holding his car seat, wondering what on earth is happening how can this be real? I don't have any place in my world for this to be true. And so I did what I think a lot of us do when we encounter things that push against something we currently believe, which is we just try to look for reasons to shut it down, reasons why it can't be true. And so I did that um, much to, uh, you know, my shame that I, I didn't sort of lean into immediately that sense of, wow, I've misunderstood her, but rather let me figure out ways that I am the safe place for her son. And she is the person who isn't safe. Um, But the more that I got to know her, the more I saw who she really is, who she was then, who she is today, which is a mom who deeply loves her son and wanted to be there for him and wanted to provide him with Uh, a mother who was present and caring and able to raise him. You know, one of the things she did after that day, she got to spend one hour of visitation with him. And then he came back to our house and she left for inpatient drug treatment. But I had agreed that she could call me once a day on my phone and she would call and ask me for any details that I could give her about Beckham. She just wanted to know everything there was to know, which is not a lot with an infant. They don't do very much, but she wanted to know anything I could tell her. And then she would say, Christina, can you put me on speakerphone? And I would click her over to speakerphone and she would sing to Beckham over the phone. I could be standing in my kitchen as he's sitting in his little bouncy seat. He was tiny, just five pounds, nine ounces when he came to us. And he's just sitting there sleeping and here is Joanne singing, Jesus loves me to him over speakerphone. And over time, that just broke my heart. It it helped me to see what I could not see before, which is Joanne is a mom like me. She loves her son just as much as I love my three sons. She wants to be there for him. And her addiction is a really serious crisis in her life, but it's not a result of some uh, moral failing in her that she's she is uh, a terrible person who isn't trying to do the right thing. I really saw it as what I believe it really is, which is a um, this very serious health crisis that she was going through. She needed help for that. And she'll be the first to say she needed help at that time. She couldn't take care of him in a healthy way. She needed treatment. She needed to be um, surrounded by a support system and an accountability system that would help her to make the changes in her life that would allow her to take care of him well. But it really shook me up because... I live in Mississippi. We have the highest imprisonment rate in the country. The United States has the highest imprisonment rate in the world, unless you go to dictatorships like North Korea. And so I began to struggle with this sense of what's what's happening because people like Joanne are being put in prison every day for the same thing that she was struggling with. She was using drugs. She bought on the street. She would have been arrested for that if she had been caught. And 
what would happen then to her? Would she get the help that she needed? It was Is prison really what she needed? Or is healthcare and counseling and coping strategies and all the things she was getting in drug treatment? Was that the thing that she really needed? And that was really disturbing to me to really begin to think about because um, more than half the children who are in foster care are there because of some drug-related cause for their parents. So if we're missing the mark on how we address drugs and addiction, the downstream impact of that is significant. It is the the scope of that cascading effect is beyond anything I think most of us recognize. And I began a learning journey to figure out, could we do something differently? And that learning journey is what the book Curious is about. It's my life story. Um, growing up in a very unconventional home here in Mississippi, we did things a lot differently than most of the rest of the world. Um, even though it was a wonderful Christian home, uh, we just, my parents walked to the beat of their own drummer. And um, so it's some of my my life story, how I developed the way I thought about drugs and addiction. It's the story of Joanne, her backstory, uh, the story of our journey together. And then what I learned as I began this process of rethinking everything I thought I knew about drugs. We're talking to Christina Dent and about her book that you can get right now. It came out, out not too long ago, if I'm correct. And Yeah, uh, just last month. Yeah. So uh, again, the name of the book is Carrie's A Foster Mom's uh, Discovery of an Unexpected Solution to Drugs and Addiction. And tying this to In It for Good, that became a passion project. And kind of tell us a little bit about some of the things that y'all are doing because I believe you also had a summit not too long ago. Mm-hmm. And I think that was last month as well. Yep. What are some of the things that um, inspired you to go even further and start this project? Yeah. So that was 2015 when I met Joanne. Um, took about a year and a half of learning and reading and talking with people and really trying to deep dive into what could we do differently. It ended up completely changing my mind about the best path forward with drugs and addiction. And I found it so compelling. To me, it seemed like it was this, um, this box of opportunity and hope that needed to be opened and it needed to be shared with the world because I really do believe that the solutions that we could pursue could change the way we experience life because of how big of an impact the way we approach drugs and addiction has on everything from crime to life expectancy to educational opportunity, employment opportunity, family stability, foster care, it impacts almost every area of our lives, whether we recognize it or not, and whether we're using drugs or not. So if you're listening and you don't use drugs and you think, this is not my problem, you're living in a world that is dramatically impacted on the community level, the family level, the society level, um, even things like immigration. These are big issues that are related to how we handle drugs and addiction. And so um, I felt like, wow, there's so much here. I, I think people just are like me. They don't, they don't know what's actually happening. They don't know the root cause of the harm that they're experiencing and that their ex- communities are experiencing. And I want to share that to see if anybody else is open to rethinking this. So I started hosting some book discussions. Um, this is long before I wrote a book and I read a book called uh, Chasing the Scream by uh, Johan Hari. And it was really helpful to me. It was really compelling. It was an easy read, but well-researched. So I started hosting book discussions around that in 2017 just as a passion project. Are there, is there anybody else in Mississippi who's interested in rethinking what we're doing and is looking for better solutions? And people came. The first one, there were 12 people. The second one, there were 25. The third one, there were 50. And then I got requests to come and lead them in other parts of the state and other communities where people would gather their friends and connections. And I would come and lead discussions there. And that was how End It For Good was born. It was born out of this grassroots effort of people coming together to say, we don't want to bury any more people. You know, the United States lost 100,000 people last year to overdose. We're we're sick of burying people. We're sick of getting poor outcomes where people maybe have been to prison. Now they can't get a job because they've got a felony that they can't provide for their families for the rest of their lives. It's 
there's too many negative outcomes. We want to find something that actually works, a, a tool and a solution that actually works. And so that grew into End It For Good. We became a nonprofit in 2019. And this book, Curious, is part of that work. It's part of, um, we host events, we do speaking. I do a lot of speaking and interviews, um, inviting people into this conversation, inviting them on this journey to learn. And uh, we just hosted that summit. We had a great um, experience. We were at the Jackson Convention Complex in, in Jackson and um, brought in 17 speakers from all over the country for just big ideas. We talked about everything from the medical use of psychedelics to treat opioid use disorder. There's really compelling research coming out on that. Um, talked about Kratom and what do we do with Kratom regulation and um, the harm that it can cause being unregulated in gas stations. All kinds of things, whether it's things people are experiencing right now or things law enforcement could do to better um, address the people that they are interacting with every day, struggling with addictions. And where all of that is in service to inviting people to support approaches to drugs and addiction that do three things. We're, we're looking for solutions that prioritize life, that preserve families, and that promote public safety. And we believe that the solutions that we're offering, the solutions that are offered and curious as, as I come to those conclusions myself, um, really could change our world. And that's our work is educating people and then allowing them to come to their own conclusions. I'm a big believer in uh, respecting people's intellect, respecting people's ability to wrestle with ideas and wherever they land is okay. We don't all have to agree on everything. But you can't be informed. You can't make an informed vote. You can't make an informed decision unless you are first informed. And so that is our role in our work is to help people understand um, things that I was not aware of. Um, and in our experience leading thousands of people now through events that a lot of people have never either thought about or not aware of the root causes of crime related to drugs, the root causes of overdose, the root causes of this family destabilization that happens because of the chaos of um, addiction as we experience it today. And we think that could be very different. And so that is our work. And it's part of um, this launch of Curious Into the World. This is my heart work. It is a, a memoir. It just is a memoir on a particular issue, inviting people to, to think big picture and to consider whether there are better solutions, maybe challenging solutions, but better solutions that could actually reduce harm across societies, across the world, and lead to a huge step forward in human thriving. We believe that's what's on the table. And so I'll, I'll, um, I'll preach that all day long on, particularly as a person of faith, wanting to see people be able to live out who God made them to be as a person made in his image. Um, that is my own personal conviction and something that's uh, dear to my heart of wanting people to stay alive and to be able to live out who God made them to be. We're talking to Christina Dent and about her book that you can get right now on Amazon, Carries a Foster Mom's Discovery of an Unexpected Solution to Drugs and Addiction. You also have a podcast, In It For Good podcast, and the whole point of everything you're doing is... Shifting away from the original way of dealing with drugs, and that's the criminal justice approach, and leaning towards a more health centered solution and solutions, I should say. When yes. you are in Mississippi, have you had the opportunity to talk with local leaders and government and present ideas or studies that you're doing with and for good for maybe possible opportunities in the future to create new systems? Yeah, that's a great question, Shamaya. I love that. Um, so when I started with these book discussions and then starting End It For Good, I thought nobody that is an elected official is ever going to want to talk to me or to us as an organization. They're going to be trying to stay away from this completely because it's just going to feel like too big of a shift um, on too polarizing of an issue. People feel very strongly about how we handle drugs and addiction. It's a very personal, very emotional issue for a lot of people. And I just thought there's no way that anybody who is elected is going to want to give me the time of day. 
thankfully my experience has been very much different from that. And I think a lot of that comes from, um, our commitment as an organization to respectful dialogue and to finding areas of agreement, even if we don't agree on everything. So we have people we talk to regularly who say, we disagree with you about the solution, but we love the work that you're doing in communities to bring people together, to host um, great dialogue that is respectful on a tough issue. People are hungry for that in our polarized world. And they recognize the heart behind our work, which is we are deeply committed to the thriving of people. And we might have different perspectives on the solutions that are going to help more people thrive, but we can agree that we all want that, that that's the path that we're on. And so we've had legislators that have come to our events. We've had legislators reach out to us asking for just our perspective educationally on particular legislation, not not from a lobbying perspective, but just saying, help me understand fentanyl. Help me understand the fentanyl crisis. What could we do to save lives when so many people are dying from contamination and from overdose? And so those opportunities have come to us because of the integrity of the organization and our approach to um, being committed to finding solutions that work and being able to stay in relationship and have great relationships with people who don't necessarily agree with us. And so that has lent itself to, um, to great opportunities with everybody from mayors, supervisors, city councils, to, um, to legislators and being able to, to speak into some of those um, uh, people who have the influence to make the kinds of changes that we want to see happen. But here's the thing that I want people to take away from this is all change, even if it's a policy change, all change originates from culture change and voter change. So any movement that is going to to come in this issue from how we approach drugs and addiction is not going to start at the top. It does not start with the people who are in charge of making those laws and have the power to change them. It starts from their constituents, from the people who support them, the people who vote for them, the people who call their offices, the people who um, talk with them when they're out in the community. That's where they're gauging. What does my community want? What kind of approach do they want? And when they hear from the community that they're ready for a change, that they want health-centered solutions to a health problem instead of criminal justice solutions to a health problem, which is why that has not worked. It is the wrong tool for that particular issue. When they hear that from the community, that is what lets them know, okay, if I'm going to represent my community this is what they want now and I can make that change. And it doesn't feel so um, so scary to make that change. It's very difficult for an elected official to just step out there by themselves. They're supposed to represent their community and what their community wants. So if the community says, we want to continue down this path, let's arrest people for drug possession, let's put them in jail for five or 10 years. It's not working and it hasn't worked, but let's continue on down that path they're probably going to continue down that path. If they hear from the community, we want a change. We want solutions that actually keep people alive. We want solutions that don't destabilize families and kill people's economic opportunity through unnecessary criminal records. If they hear that from their community, they're much more likely to begin to shift in that direction. And I'll give you an example of that. So here in Mississippi, this past year, we um, made the shift to make fentanyl testing strips legal. So they're little paper strips. You can put some of the drug that you're about to use in water, dissolve it, put the fentanyl testing strip in it, and it will let you know if it has fentanyl in it. And studies have shown people who use these are there. They use less drugs. They tend to use with people around in case they overdose accidentally. So they can absolutely keep people alive. This same legislation failed two years ago in our legislature and it passed overwhelmingly, um, unanimously this time. And what didn't pass was increased penalties for drug possession, for fentanyl. So we have a fentanyl crisis. We had kind of two different paths to take. There were bills for both paths, fentanyl testing strips and increased penalties. 
And our legislature made a shift. They legalized the fentanyl testing strips. They let the bill die that would have increased penalties because there's a a shift happening towards from the community saying, we want solutions that actually work. We're concerned about college students at a party who die from fentanyl contamination. We don't want that to happen. How can we find solutions that actually reduce harm rather than just punish people? If we want to just punish people, we can continue going down that path. But I think most people want actually solutions that that work, solutions that are more likely to produce a healthy society. And that's what um, the book Curious is offering is is one pathway to do that. And um, I think you'll find it compelling. I think you'll find it um, maybe not necessarily convincing. That's not my goal. My goal is to introduce people to solutions they've probably never thought about before. And to do that in a way that is story driven, that's an easy read, and that will leave them thinking and uh, a little bit inspired. We've been talking to Christina Dent, and you can visit her website, initforgood.com. And don't forget to grab her book, Curious A Foster Mom's Discovery of an Unexpected Solution to Drugs and Addiction. Real quick, someone who's listening to this, they're a leader in their community. What's the best process for them to connect with you if they would like to take uh, what you're doing in Mississippi and replicate it throughout the nation? I'm just going to give you my email address. They can email me, Christina at enditforgood.com. I would love to talk to them. I think that is such an opportunity for people to to come together and to figure out in a particular community what is the best process. Um, We have been figuring that out first in Mississippi. We hope to expand that into other states. And so if you're in another state or you're in Mississippi, reach out. I'd love to know what your particular community makeup is and the resources that might be able to come together around moving this movement into other communities. It is all about trusted relationships. That is how this work has happened and grown starting in Mississippi and is now moving into other places. And the only way to do that is through just those one-on-one connections to begin to build those coalitions and to begin to build that trust in a community. The the very first step I would say to take is get a copy of Curious and read it. 75% of those proceeds go right back to End It For Good for furthering this cause. So you're you're supporting the cause if you just buy a book. And then gather a few people together and read it together. There is a discussion guide for it on our website at enditforgood.com. You can have a couple of people get together and see, is there, do you have a few people that are interested in movement, that are interested in maybe trying to take this to the to the broader community in some kind of way? I This was a passion project in the beginning for me. It can be a passion project for other people. I am not special in that way. Um, I just began this thing and it began to take off and you just don't know what doors get opened when you start to take that first step. So grab the book, read it, grab a few friends, put it together, read it, reach out to me. I'd love to join a book discussion virtually um, with your group of people and drop in and, and talk directly with you about that. So reach out to me at Christina at enditforgood.com. Grab a copy of the book Curious and let's talk because we want to see this movement towards life and health grow all across the country and all across the world. And this is our Refocus Radio talking to Christina DeDent. She is founder and president of In It For Good. Go to initforgood.com, like she said, and also pick up her book on Amazon. It will be in the show notes. Once again, Christina, I want to say thank you for your time. Thanks, Shemaya.